welcome this is a little bit of a different video this is a little bit of an introduction to the trip that we just took to noise provincial house it's in the province of udon Thani, in a very small village that i butcher the name of all the time and she owns the house it's her house paid for and uh, it, it's sort of a uh, story of struggle that she's had to endure to keep that house part of the struggle was when the world went on the pandemic closed down they closed down all of Thailand. And that put everybody out of work for two and a half years. And literally, in order to put food on the table, she had to borrow money from local people against the title of her house which was sad because her provincial house is where her family lives, her mom or dad, her teenage, mid-teenage son, her sister-in-law, a little baby, and uh, this was some place that I had visited with Noy last July for the first time. And when I got there, I was sort of in awe of the modest lifestyle that they lived and how hard they worked to survive. And I'm not the most observant person in the world, but I started observing things like, where's the refrigerator? They didn't have a. They had a washing machine, not dryer, just a washing machine. They drank water from five-gallon water bottles, but they didn't even have a dispenser to, that you put the bottle in to port they just used it out of the bottles and that's what they did they didn't have much of a kitchen their bathroom didn't have a shower and had one of those squatty potties but not a regular toilet and uh, no air conditioning the house, a lot of the windows were gone, or maybe they never existed. And the main problem to the house is that when it was built, it wasn't built with any place high enough. That when it has the rainy season and it really rains hard, four or five inches of water could come into the house because it wasn't built up high enough. So last year after my trip, I, this goes back to part of my video that I did on my other channel at sign Mark dash Hannah called die broke and how that, can be a good thing and how some people when they get in the later years of their life they tighten up they want to save every penny they can because they're afraid to run out of money or something like that and how much 
joy you can get by not being that way. So, after our trip last time, while we were up there, basically, we went to Power Buy and bought a new refrigerator, had shipped to them, and a microwave for heating food. But they still didn't have, like, they didn't have a gas stove or anything like that. The area in their kitchen, they didn't have a sink or any real place that they really had set up for preparing food real well. Wasn't much. It was a very meager deal. Well, after the rainy season hit last year, Noi would get calls where the house was flooded. I mean, literally, this house doesn't have real bedrooms. And in Thailand, a lot of people, they put a pad on the floor about that thick and maybe an inch thick pad. And they sleep on the floor. Well, when you sleep on the floor and it floods, you, you're really aggravated bad time. And then, of course, when the flood subsides, you got to clean the whole house and everything else. So, I basically convinced Noy, and I want to make this perfectly clear. This was not Noy's idea. This was my idea. And it started out by just, they were going to put some concrete, and they did. They poured concrete up in the front of the house to try to divert the water to go somewhere else. And that was a poor solution, but it was better than nothing. But the real problem was, it was, you know, the main part of the house is built too low. Now, it was my idea, not noise, that she should replace the roof, which leaked. And, I mean, this is an old house. And when they went to replace the roof, they noticed that some supports on the roof, which were wooden posts, were ate up by termites, and it just got... Further and further, and pretty soon, they redid the whole house. So, it's still not luxury living by U.S. standards. But I'm confident now that during the rainy season, it'll be dry. And the windows all are good windows they'll keep out the rain and uh there's a bathroom with a shower and hot water although i found out something very interesting tidbits from thailand i've been trying to take cooler showers because it's more invigorating and i came to a conclusion that Perhaps the metering valve on my showers was letting too much hot water in because I couldn't get cold enough. So I went, and in Thailand, they usually have instant-on hot water heaters wherever you need hot water. So literally, in this house, there are three, three bathrooms and a kitchen, and all of them had hot water, and they all have their own hot water heater. So in the bathroom where I take the shower all the time, I turned the hot water heater off. Just turned it off. And then I turned on the water and dead cold. And it wasn't cold. It was still warm. It came out to temperature that was not cold at all. So for the most part, 
unless the temperatures around here drop a hell of a lot, which in Udon Thani, they drop more than they do in Pattaya because it is 600 kilometers north of here. And we're around the 12, I think we're around the 12 degree latitude line. So that 600 kilometers, it makes a difference. It gets a little cooler, but you don't need hot water, but we put it in anyway. And I wanted to introduce this video. I didn't want to make it too long. But this took three months, this project did, to do. And Noy managed it and general contracted it out, spending hours on the phone like a pro and was never there. She talked to the people who put in the plumbing, the people who, you know, at, at the place where you buy the paint, the people where you buy the roofing, the roofers, the people who were tore up the old concrete floor and took it out, people to bring dirt in. I was proud of her. I mean, she is a really good business person. Uh, she handles it and gets discounts and uh, it was a three-month project. Well, at the end of this three-month project, she came to me and she said, well, we want to do a Buddhist house blessing or a merit and Actually, in this case, nine monks come to the house and they do a ceremony, which I thought, okay, I, I'm not Buddhist and I don't pretend to understand everything, but these people are, have big hearts. And, well, I'm going to tell you the whole story about the house blessing. And let me tell you, it is unusual and I don't know how these people do it because <laughs> it they spent a hell of a lot of money doing this house blessing because what I didn't realize is all the work it takes to put one on and all the people in the village who come and actually help and a lot of volunteerism. And when you do your house blessing, it isn't nine monks who come. It's nine monks and damn near everybody in the village, which will be in a later video. Now, this video has went on too long already. But what I'm going to do is use this as an introduction video. And tomorrow, we will upload the next part of, the, of this trip. By the way, this trip also ends up in a search. And ultimately, the purchase of a pick, pickup truck. Her family has never owned more than a motorbike and a Solink, which is a motorbike that has a little side utility car on the side that you can put four people or a bunch of groceries or they use it for everything. It's like a motorcycle, teeny, teeny pickup truck. They've never owned anything more than, than a small 125cc motorcycle used or sawing used and uh, part of the thing was I wanted to see her family have a little better life and having a pickup truck for what they do would make their life a whole lot better so one of the videos is going to show our search 
and what we did about pickups and what they cost and what it all figured out to. But at the end of this series, I hope to show how the people in the provinces and in the little villages and the rural villages. Uh, and if you don't think it's rural, I'm going to put a picture up right now. This picture was taken sitting in front of Noy's house. I was in the car sitting in front of the house and I just snapped this picture. So if you don't think it's rural, if you don't think it's a small village, you will when you see this. And the people there are so loving and so wonderful. And it, it's, it's amazing. I guess the words out that I was helping out with this because a lot of the people there went out of their way to smile and some thank me and hug me, you know, for helping out. But, yeah, you, know, you raise the life of people around you. You help them out. Karma. Everybody says karma's a bitch. Well, not if you treat karma with love. Karma can be very good. So, thank you for listening. If you made it all the way to the end, I really thank you. Give it a thumbs up, a like, a share, and know that the next four or five days is going to come some more story videos. I know this is going carnivore with Thailand on, on some aspect, and I'm also going to do it on the Mark Hanna channel because it's pretty cool. But, uh, Some of it's going to reflect how tough it is traveling to stay carnivore. It, it, we did good. We didn't cheat. We ate well. But it, it's a little different than being at home and doing this. I feel I'm losing inches. But after this trip, I've been really tired. I don't know, maybe it's a long 10-hour drives, but 11-hour drives. And driving is so stressful here. <laughs> wow, you can't imagine. It's just so much harder. But I've been tired the last two days I've been back. So this is a prelude to the series of the rebuilding of the house and the house blessing and the search for a pickup truck and a trip up and back things we saw thank you for watching please share and like and uh go carnivore if you haven't already if you haven't noticed a difference in the way i look and f you can't tell how i feel but the way i look uh it's it's really uh, incredible to me that just giving up fruits and vegetables and sugar has made a tremendous difference. I checked my blood pressure today, and if I check to see exactly what my blood pressure showed, today it was 129 over 77. And the blood sugar, that was my blood pressure, was at 64 beats per minute. And my blood sugar was a 97. So, not bad. Not bad when I add 160s for blood pressure and 360s for blood sugar. And I'm not... And I've gotten totally off of metformin. I was taking four or five hundred milligrams of metformin every day. 
So that was one of my diabetes medicines to get lower my blood sugar. I'm down to no metformin every day. So there's a little bit of going carnivore. Thanks a lot for watching. That's all, folks.